say the sound. That's called preforming. It's impossible to talk if you preform. But the individual who stutters isn't aware of that. So the individual preforms the tongue, fearing the sound may not come out right. Why he or she fears that? Somebody may have criticized the articulation or the style or the hesitation or prolongation. And the child may go to a rate beyond what he or she can really contain or control. So we, in a sense, outwardly, those about the child, determine and direct the child to a rate or a pattern, or criticize the rate or the pattern or the style, so that the child reacts, becomes psychologically and emotionally uptight about a speech pattern that essentially is normal. But not too many people know that bobbling, hesitation, he hesitation and pro prolongation and re re repetition is normal. So the child reacts to the adult concern or reacts within the child himself, not knowing the bobble or the bobbles are normal. What happens then? Pre formation. Instead of me saying my name is Mort Cooper, I say my name, and you can see the tightening of the lips. When you tighten the lips, the whole mechanism goes tight, the body goes tight, the breathing stops or is reversed. Stutterers talk all too often holding their breath, and it's not very easy to talk without air. It's like riding a car with the wheels not having air. It's not very easy doing that, and if you do do it, you're doing the impossible. Stutterers try to do the impossible. They try to talk without air. They try to talk with the tongue up against the roof of their mouth or their lips held tightly. And they try to force the sound out. It's not very easy to do. Stutterers, as they grow up, want perfect speech. There is no such thing as perfect speech. Let me tell you about it. If you have the concept that you can be perfect in speech, you're impossible. There are no perfect speakers anywhere in the world. Take it from me. If you are a perfect speaker, you have no bobbles, no hesitations, no prolongations, no repetitions, no hesitations. You belong in all of those handbooks, the Guinness Handbook, believe it or not, Ripley. It's impossible. We all have hesitations, prolongations, repetitions, and all of that. I call it the bobbling of America. My field calls it disfluencies. They have a big word. I have a little word. I think the little word gets across. When we are in front of people and we're on stage, we bobble more. Sometimes we bobble more despite the fact that we're not on stage. It may be we don't know what we're talking about and we lack confidence or we may just talk on and not bobble very much because we don't care what people think. But stutterers do care. They care very much what you and I think. They're always wondering, what is it that you think of their speech? When you talk, you really, rarely think of how to form your words. You may think of a sound now and then that's a little difficult for you, like in aluminum or statistics. But stutterers think all the time about sounds. Sounds, sounds, and sounds in words and how words will come out. They live and breathe with sounds from morning to night, wondering who is going to notice that they bobble. They think in terms of perfection. They play a game of stuttering. The game is played by the wrong rules, I believe. If you change the rules and allow the individual who is re repeating to do that easily, without effort, you are becoming like one of us. You are normal. We, we, we do that all the time. William B B Buckley does it all the time. I, I, I think the, the situation that, that we have 
And he does that with his tongue, and it's very effective. He doesn't rush. He's an easy speaker. You may not appreciate William Buckley. I do. I like the easy style. He makes his point his way. It may not be your way. It may not be my way. But, but he gets the word out, and he's not afraid to bobble. Stutterers are terrified by the concept of b bobbling, and they force the b bobble like that. If you watch my lips, you will see the difference between e easy repetition and e e e and you see the tension. I can duplicate the bobble, and I can duplicate stuttering. Stuttering is not bobbling, and bobbling is not stuttering. And the two shall never meet. The twain shall never meet. But the stutterer doesn't know that. Those at Stanford I worked with in 1957, when I was a director for the Adult Stutterers Group, learned the difference between bobbling and stuttering. And they stopped reacting to bobbling. They became normal. We all bobble, every last one of us. Andy Rooney bobbles, Mike Wallace bobbles, Ted Koppel bobbles, people everywhere on radio and television, and in real life, I call it real life, other than radio and television, because we too often feel they're perfect. They're not perfect, they rehearse a great deal. And because they rehearse a great deal, and they're professionals, they sound better than most of us, but they bobble. And if they bobble too much, they take out the bobbles. Did you know that? They take the bobbles out because they have pre-recordings, or if the bobbles are there, they gloss over it. And many of us don't hear the bobbles. We hear the bobbles in people on interview shows, and they bobble all the time. I like to hear bobbles. Stutterers don't. You hear them, and you just accept them. Bobbling is the American way. When you wake up in the morning, you may be a little weary, and, and you haven't got that flow. Stutterers run scared. They want the flow. They want to be perfect. There are no perfect speakers, but thinking there are makes it impossible for you to be at ease. If you're not at ease, you really can't speak normally, because tension, tension, makes it very difficult for you to talk. If you're too tense, you see what happens when somebody talks on stage in public speaking. They become somebody other than themselves. Just a few moments before you were talking with them, they were very normal people, and they had very easy speech. And then suddenly on stage, they changed. They became other than the person you know. What happened to them? It's called stage fright. Have you ever seen what happens to people who have stage fright? They can't remember what they say. They don't want to remember what they say. They didn't mean what they say or said. What happens to stutterers? They have perennial stage fright. It is my view they're always wondering what people are thinking of their speech. We don't think about that. We think about other things than what people think of our speech. We may have funny voices. We may talk like it. We may sound like Henry Kissinger. I feel that the situation that we have. We may have Sandy Duncan voices. Do you like we think? But we don't think of our speech per se. And we don't even think of our voices. We just accept it as such. But there are those like stutterers who wonder and worry about everything they do when they talk, from the time they get up to the time they go to bed, and even in their dreams, they wonder about their speech. Now, that's not very easy on the body, and it creates an awful lot of tension. I wonder how people make it through the day worrying about their speech from morning to night and night to morning. It's not very easy on the psyche and on the soul and on relationships, and the feelings, and all of that. We do